So to finish up some of the questions from the 6869 notes, let's take a look at example number uh, 1D on page 1. So 1D, <coughs> excuse me, has the integral of x squared times the square root of 1 minus x dx. So when you're trying to do a u substitution, um, again, when you look inside the radical, I'm going to let u, and it tells you in the problem, to let u be equal to 1 minus x. So they're giving that to us. So when I go to find my du, that's going to be negative x dx. Excuse me, negative dx. When I take the derivative of 1, that's 0. Negative, derivative of negative x is just a negative dx. So the issue becomes is I have this x squared in front of this particular radical. So the question is, how can I do a u substitution? Because right now, the only thing I can replace um, is the 1 minus x and my dx in terms of u and du. So somehow, some way, I have to rewrite or get rid of this x and replace it in terms of u. So some of the u substitution problems, what you're going to have to do is when you let u be equal to something in terms of x, you may need to solve for x in order to replace this particular term um, in terms of u. So if I look at u is equal to 1 minus x, then I know that x will be equal to 1 minus u. So if there's a case where you're going to have to do a u substitution, again, you may have to actually take this expression solve it for x, and then rewrite your integral in terms of u in that particular format. So when I do this, when I replace my x with my 1 minus u to the second power times, I can replace 1 minus x with u, and that's just going to be a u to the 1 half times du. Again, remember, I do need to pull a negative sign out in the front because, again, I have a negative dx here. So now what I'm going to have to do Inside my integral before I can integrate, I am going to have to FOIL, and then I'm going to have to distribute. So I have 1 minus 2u plus u squared, and all of that is times u to the 1 half du. Now I need to distribute that u to the 1 half, so I have the negative integral of u to the 1 half minus 2u. Again, when I have u to the first times u to the 1 half, that's going to give me a u to the 3 halves, since 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. <clears throat> and then u squared times u to the 1 half, that's going to give me plus u to the 5 halves times du. Now remember, you do have your property of integration. You're going to integrate term by term. So I have negative u to the 1 half du. Again, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this, plus my integral of 2u to the 3 halves, and then minus my integral of u to the 5 halves du. So now I'm just going to integrate term by term using your power rule. So again, when I add 1, that's going to give me a u. 1 half plus 1 is going to give me 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves means I multiply by 2 thirds. So I have negative 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Plus, I can pull this constant out. And when I integrate u to the 3 halves, that's going to be u to the 5 halves. Divide by 5 halves or multiply by 2 fifths. But then remember, I have that constant of 2. So then I have negative 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, plus this is going to give me 4 fifths <coughs> u to the 5 halves. And then again, I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to add 1. So this is going to give me a minus u to the 7 halves. Divide by 7 halves or multiply by 2. So that's minus 2 sevenths. So any questions on what I've done so far? So now remember, I want to replace my u with the 1 minus x. So I have negative 2 thirds times 1 minus x raised to the 3 halves plus 4 fifths times 1 minus x raised to the 5 halves and then minus 2 sevenths times 1 minus x raised to the 7 halves. And there's your x final answer. And again, don't forget your C because it's an indefinite integral. So that is example 1D from your 6869 notes. Um, on page 2, example 4, this kind of ties in 
um, a, diff a bunch of different integration techniques. Um, but these integrals look very similar, and the way you approach them will be very different depending upon the setup. For example, if you take a look at 4A and 4B, the only difference between 4A and 4B is that notice in 4A you've got the variable x in the numerator, in 4B you do not. So because that x is in the numerator in A, it's going to completely change the way that you handle A versus the way you're going to handle B. So for example, um, if you take a look at 25 plus 9x squared, this is going to be a u sub. I'm going to let u be equal to 25 plus 9x squared. And the reason why I know this is because if I look at the derivative, you kind of got to look one step ahead with some of the u sub problems. If you look at the derivative of 25 plus 9x squared, I know that's going to be an 18x. And there's that x dx that I need for a u sub to work. So my du is going to be 18x dx, which is what I have right here. So that in order to solve for x dx, I'm going to divide by 18. So that I can write, rewrite this integral as 1 over u times your du over 18. So I can pull out that 1 18th and integrate 1 over u du. And again, the integral of 1 over u is just going to be the natural log. And then I can replace that u with a 25 plus 9x squared. So there's the answer for part A. Part B, because you do not have an x in the numerator, this is going to be set up to look a lot like an inverse tangent integral. So again, we know for inverse tangent, we need this number right here to be a 1. So again, the difference between a and b with that variable of x to the first in the numerator, the variable in x squared in the denominator, I could do a u sub. However, this has just a constant in the numerator. A u sub would not work because you'd be stuck. You would need an x dx which you do not have as a part of this integral. So we're going to set this up to be the inverse um, tangent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a 25 out of that denominator. So then I can pull out that constant of 25. Remember, with these inverses, we need to rewrite this as a base raised to the second power. So I can rewrite this as 3x over 5 raised to the second power dx. Now I'm ready to set up to do a u sub. u is equal to 3x over 5. Again, look inside the parentheses. My du will be 3 fifths dx. So again, I do have the dx as part of this integral. So to solve for dx, I'm going to divide by 3 fifths or multiply by 5 thirds. So 5 thirds du is equal to dx. So then I can rewrite this particular integral as 1 over 25 times my integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared times 5 thirds du. When I pull the 5 thirds out, I'm going to multiply 5 thirds times the 1 over 25. So that's going to give me 1 over 15 times my integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du. Now I have this set up as the inverse tangent. So when I integrate 1 over 1 plus u squared, that's going to be 1 over 15 times my inverse tangent of u plus c. And again, remember, you need to rewrite this in terms of x. u is equal to 3x over 5. So my final answer would be 1 15th times the inverse tangent of 3x over 5 plus c. So you can see the big difference in the way we approach a and b. Again, these fractions look very similar, except one had an x in the numerator, the other one did not. So you can see how one approach with the x in the numerator and then an x squared in the denominator, we could do a u sub. However, without that x in the numerator, a u sub's not going to work, so I set this up as my inverse tangent. For letter C, 
Notice I just took the reciprocal of A. Notice you have a single monomial in the denominator, so what I'm going to do is split this up into two smaller fractions. 25 over X plus 9X squared over X dx. Again, I could pull this 25 out. Again, I can simplify this to 9x, so I'm just going to pull that 9 out. And now I can integrate term by term. Your integral of 1 over x is the natural log of x. And again, when I integrate x, that's going to be an x squared over 2, so I have 9x squared over 2 plus c. So again, when you have that single monomial in the denominator, you can split it up into your two smaller fractions. And again, with letter D, I'm just going to integrate term by term. So when I integrate 25, that's going to be 25x. When I integrate 9x squared, that's going to be a 9x to the third over 3, and don't forget your C. So my final answer will be 25x plus 3x to the third plus C. So when you're looking at these rational expressions, the way you approach them can be very different, even though they look almost identical. But like I said, in this first one, you had that x. In the second one, you did not. So one would be a use that one would be x and the over x squared would be a use of. This one would be your inverse trig.